How could anyone not like the Oasis of the Seas? Yes, I have a confession to make. That was me, but I am doing it again. And I will be telling you what I will be doing differently. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So you heard me right, and I've said it before, I just didn't love my cruise experience on the Oasis of the Seas. And it wasn't for the fact that the Oasis of the Seas wasn't an amazing ship, it absolutely was. What I realized was there were some things that I genuinely didn't love about that cruise experience, that's 100%, but there were some things that I could do differently to enjoy this ship more because being completely honest, when my husband Frank and I reflected on that cruise, we realized there were some absolutely amazing things that we did enjoy. And it really was worth having a redo on this experience. So in this video, what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing with you my honest opinions of what I didn't like and the things that I am going to be doing differently to hopefully have a different type of experience. Now, if you're planning a cruise on the Oasis of the Seas, you might find this video helpful because it'll help you to reflect on how you want to plan your cruise vacation. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and do so. I'd love to have you here within the Life Well Cruise community. Let's get started. Okay, so I always like to start with the positive. So let's look at the amazing things about the Oasis of the Seas. So firstly, the Oasis of the Seas and its sister ships are the biggest cruise ships in the world, and they really are a wonder. And I truly do feel that if you are a cruise fan, you should try an Oasis class ship at least once in your cruising career. With seven neighborhoods on the cruise ship, there definitely is something for everybody. Now, what we really loved on the Oasis of the Seas was the amazing entertainment. The truth is there has been no ship that's ever come close to the amazing entertainment that we've seen on the Oasis of the Seas. So from Broadway shows to an aqua theater show, skating shows, of course, the illusionists, the comedians, the guest entertainers, everything on the ship in terms of the entertainment was absolute top quality. If you're sailing with kids, the Kids Club Adventure Ocean is amazing on the Oasis of the Seas. And there's so many things to do for young kids all the way through teens and young adults on this ship. Now, despite having over 6,000 passengers, there are so many pools and hot tubs and again, seven neighborhoods that this ship actually never felt crowded when we were on it. So that was definitely a plus. And I have to say, like all Royal Caribbean ships, the Oasis of the Seas is absolutely beautiful. And now it's been amplified and we're so excited to see so many of the awesome changes and new venues on the ship as well. Now, all of those positive things being said, there were some things that I genuinely didn't like and that left me at the end of my cruise vacation on the Oasis feeling like I needed another vacation. And truthfully, I've never felt this on a cruise before. So there's definitely some things that I could have done differently and some things I will be doing differently as I am booked on another Oasis ship. So what didn't I like? What would I do differently on the Oasis of the Seas on this cruise? Well, firstly, the Oasis of the Seas is a mega ship. So it is a really large ship. Now, typically I prefer large ships and even medium to large ships. That just tends to be where I'm the most comfortable, where I have enough things to do, but I'm not feeling very overwhelmed. So definitely this was something about the Oasis of the Seas. We were always like on the go. There was always something to see. And as much as that is good, we did feel like we kind of needed a vacation after this vacation and we also just didn't feel very connected to the sea. Now I cruise and I love the feeling of the sea, the hearing, the ocean and being completely honest when we were on the top deck, the 16th deck, we were often really looking inward. We were looking at the neighborhoods, at Central Park uh, from the pool area, at the boardwalk. We often weren't looking outwards at the sea and I really miss that. Now, something that I did on my last cruise is I was actually booked in a boardwalk balcony cabin. Now, I booked that at the time because it's really the only class of ship that you can get this type of cabin. I thought it would be really cool, and it was. And at the time, I had two boys, and I thought this is just a really great space to be in, and it was. But what I did miss, again, was really seeing the ocean and having some time to get away from it all. So what I did this time is I did book an ocean view balcony and I think it's gonna solve that problem. So when everything feels very overstimulating, maybe even overwhelming sometimes, 
I have a place all my own to get away from it all, maybe to read, have a glass of wine and coffee and look at the ocean and well, reconnect. And other things that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look for places on the cruise ship that I can be a little more connected to the sea. So one of those places is the adult only solarium. So that area is so beautiful. And the last time we were on this ship, well, was several years ago. And well, my children were younger. So when I was with my children during the day, obviously, I wasn't at the adult only pool. So this cruise is going to be an adult only cruise. So I will definitely spend some time at the adult only solarium. I will also go walking or jogging, probably walking along the jogging track where I can be closer to the sea as well. Number two, I was always busy and I was always planning, actually over planning. And I think this one is absolutely on me. This is not the Oasis of the Sea's fault. The fact is there were so many amazing things to do, to see, to eat, um, that I really tried to do it all. And I was really over planning. And at the time, what we were doing is like looking at the cruise planner and I was highlighting and then we needed to go to one place at nine, maybe for breakfast and then another place at 10 and then another place at 11 and then maybe another place at two, another place at three. You get what I mean. Then the evening time, before dinner, after dinner, we just wanted to see it all. It reminded me of if you've ever gone to Disney and that feeling that you need to get from one ride to another ride and then to the parade and well that your whole day is so busy that you're exhausted. That's kind of like how I felt on the Oasis of the Seas. So that again, totally on me. So I'm just not going to do that anymore. And I think outside of doing a back to back, which I think then you could really do it all and you could space things out. I'm just going to have to be content with the fact that I pick and choose what I'm most in the mood for and everything else. I just leave that for another cruise. Now, what I will do to make it easier is I do actually have a cruise planner. This is something that I created over the last year and I've already started to write in it. I'm really excited about it, but this way I'm writing all ready my kind of wish list things to do. So as I watch videos about the ship, I'm writing down what I would like to see, what I would like to do. But as it gets closer, I will only pencil in the things that are actually booked, like the Broadway shows and maybe the Aqua Theater. And the other things, I will kind of leave things a little bit up in the air so that I can go with the flow a little more on this cruise. Now, if you are interested in seeing the cruise planner, I have to say it really includes so much from checklist to to-do list to even cruise outfit planner. So it really is very helpful, but I'll leave that in the description below in case you do want to check that out. Number three, the main dining room experience was kind of just okay. Now, this isn't to say that the main dining room food and the service wasn't still good. It definitely was. We weren't starving. Everything was fine. But we had sailed on Royal Caribbean in the past and the dining experience was just a little bit better in the main dining room. And I think being completely honest, I think that the cruise experience has changed over the years. And for many years, we actually kind of resisted the idea of going to specialty restaurants and kind of paying extra for meals when things were included. And by the way, there's a lot of casual food included on the Oasis even today that is definitely worth it. So you don't have to spend extra money on the Oasis of the Seas, but I do think this is something that I'm gonna do differently on this upcoming cruise. So I'm definitely gonna try some of the specialty restaurants. There are dining packages, so that's definitely a way to save a little bit of money and still go to some of the specialty restaurants. So I am debating, I could either do two restaurants, I could do three restaurants or the ultimate dining package. I think I'm gonna stay away from the ultimate dining package because I do actually wanna try the main dining room. So I think I'm gonna do probably the two or the three nights, but let me know if you have any suggestions, if you've already booked some dining packages, if you've already been on the Oasis of the Seas, and if you have some restaurant recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. Number four, remember when I said I couldn't do it all on the cruise ship and that was definitely something that we knew. There really is so much to do that I wanna be able to do a little bit more. So one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to kind of take my own advice and I'm going to actually stay on the cruise ship one of the days that we're in port. Now, the itinerary that we are doing is leaving from Bayonne, Cape Liberty, New Jersey. And so we're going to be going to Perfect Day at Coco Cay. I am really excited to go there. We haven't been there in years and we haven't been there since it's been like amplified or since it's become, well, Perfect Day at Coco Cay. But there's also Nassau 
and there's Port Canaveral. Now we've been to Port Canaveral before to Cocoa Beach and it's lovely, but we've never been to Nassau. So my thinking is that I'm probably going to stay on the ship while we are in Port Canaveral so that I can do some of the activities and explore the ship more because I definitely want to do that. This is an amazing ship. Now, if you're on the ship and even if you have a different itinerary, I think that this is maybe some good advice if you really want to do a lot of the things on the cruise ship. It really is kind of a resort at sea and it might be worth skipping a port or even coming back on the cruise ship after maybe a morning and spending some extra time on the cruise ship to do those things you want to do. Number five, I want to make things easy on this cruise. Now, I feel like after the last couple of years, I'm just ready for easy vacations. I'm ready for easy and everything I can in my life. So one of the things that I'm gonna do to make things easier is I'm actually getting a drink and a Wi-Fi package. Now, something to note is after I booked the cruise, I was able to go on the cruise planner and the Wi-Fi, the Voom, and the beverage package was actually cheaper if you bought these together. And at the time that we booked, it was, I think, 30 or 35% off. So definitely if you are booked on this cruise ship, keep an eye on your cruise planner and it might be worth booking these things in advance. You can always cancel it before your cruise or if the price goes down, you can always give them a call and you can have the price lowered. So I do think it's maybe worth thinking about depending obviously how much you drink of alcohol, coffee, water bottles, etc. cetera. Um, if you are gonna be using the internet, it might be easier to get a package and to make things easy for yourself on the cruise. Now I have a little bonus and that's what surprised me about the Oasis of the Seas and maybe I think what is a bit of a misconception. Now I think a lot of people think that when you think of a cruise ship with 6,000 plus passengers and probably 2,000 plus crew members that this will be a crowded cruise ship. Well, the cruise ship never felt crowded and overall the feedback that you hear from people is that the Oasis and its sister ships are not crowded. I think the fact that Royal Caribbean really has everybody book their entertainment, at least the main shows in advance, that's for crowd control. So this way they can know that maybe they have a thousand people in one theater and maybe they have 500 people booked, you know, maybe at the comedian show, they can disperse the crowd. And Royal Caribbean has done an amazing job at making a mega ship that almost never feels crowded. Now, as I mentioned, I will leave that cruise planner. If you'd like to check it out, I'm gonna leave it in the description below. It is $10 off right now. And if you are gonna be sailing on the Oasis of the Seas, please feel free to leave me your questions. If you've sailed on the Oasis of the Seas, please leave your tips, your favorite restaurants, the things that you think that I absolutely must do. I really do appreciate it. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now. Happy cruising.